platelet adhesion and aggregation. In flowing blood, red cells predominate in the axial stream, while the biconvex disc-shaped platelets are marginated along the vessel wall, where they are well positioned to monitor the integrity of the endothelium. The normal endothelium provides a non-adhesive surface to circulating platelets. However, when vessel wall injury occurs, for example by cutting or severing of a vessel, or as shown here by a puncture, and there is endothelial damage, the initial response of platelets is that of adhesion to collagen fibers in the exposed subendothelium. Collagen is one of the most thrombogenic components of the subendothelial matrix responsible for the initiation of platelet adhesion. A number of adhesive receptors on the platelet surface membrane interact either directly or indirectly with collagen. Initial binding of platelets is considered to occur via the integrin alpha-2-beta-1 GP1A-2A receptor, which allows for further binding to collagen via the GP6 receptor, initiating transmembrane and, subsequently, intracellular signaling. Adhesion of platelets to the exposed subendothelium is influenced by shear rates. At high shear, alpha-2-beta-1 and GP6 are not sufficient to initiate binding to collagen, and binding of the GP1B95 receptor to von Willebrand factor, abbreviated here as VWF, that is immobilized on collagen, becomes essential in platelet adhesion. Platelet adhesion at the site of vessel wall damage initiates activation events that result in aggregation. Adherent platelets undergo a dramatic shape change to an irregular sphere with multiple filipodia spreading on the subendothelium, increasing their area of surface contact. Adherent platelets also secrete or release the contents of their storage granules, the alpha, and dense granules by an exocytic process. This provides a high local concentration of effector molecules essential for platelet plug formation at the site of vascular injury. For example, the aggregating agent ADP is released from the dense granules. Platelet activation stimulates the formation of another aggregating agent, thromboxane A2, abbreviated here as TXA2, via the arachidonic acid cascade. Details are shown in Figure 26.5. The most potent platelet aggregating agent, thrombin, shown here as factor 2A, is formed via the coagulation pathway from prothrombin, or factor 2, on the procoagulant surface of the activated platelet. Details are shown in Figure 26.6. ADP, thromboxane A2, and thrombin bind to specific platelet membrane receptors and stimulate aggregation on and around the platelets adherent to the subendothelium via receptor-mediated signal transduction events. Aggregation is an active metabolic process. Binding of any of the agonists to their respective membrane receptors initiates signaling pathways that ultimately convert integrin alpha-2b-beta-3 or GP2b3a from a low affinity resting state to a high affinity activated state for binding extracellular soluble ligands such as plasma fibrinogen and von Willebrand factor. Fibrinogen is shown here. The transmission of an intracellular signal leads to disruption of the complex between the cytoplasmic tails of alpha-2b-beta-3, followed by a conformational change in its extracellular globular head domains from a bent to an extended state, promoting the binding to fibrinogen and von Willebrand factor. Divalent fibrinogen and multivalent von Willebrand factor function as bridges between alpha-2b-beta-3 receptors on adjacent activated platelets, thus allowing platelet aggregation to proceed. In this way, the large and complex metabolic repertoire of platelets allows them to effectively perform their primary physiological role, that of supporting hemostasis upon tissue trauma to form a platelet plug that arrests blood loss from a vascular injury.